Ashwa, ni wajo Koni wala, ni wasuma waeda My name is Atu Eshen, and I'm a guide at Elmina Castle. We'll first look into the historical background. Okay. We know it as a fact that in 1471 was the first time the Portuguese came over here. They came over here initially to trade. And the system of trade at the time was the butter system. So then they were giving out goods for goods. When they were coming, they brought along guns, gunpowder, spiritus, liquors, trinkets, among others. And they exchanged these for gold, ivory, later on the other spices. The one major thing the Portuguese were interested in was gold. And they talk about the fact that the rate at which our locals were giving out the gold gave them the impression that the town would be in abundance of it. So they called this place Amina or Damina, meaning the mine in their language. And it was this word that could not be pronounced properly and so was corrupted to today's word Elmina. And invariably, it became the name of the town. I tell people that is not to say that we never had a name before they came. We did. And our name was Anum Ansa. And no mansa literally suggests that when you drink, it doesn't get finished. 1482, that's 11 years after the Portuguese had first come in, led by their captain called Don Diego de Azambuja. They came to see the chief of the town called Nana Kwamina Ansa. They negotiated for this plot of land and they had the castle built. It's on record that the chief was hesitant in giving out the land citing cultural differences to be a problem in the future. He went further to suggest that friends would be better friends if they don't live together. But upon persuasions and assurances, he gave in. And this was the first time in the history of the world a West African chief legally transferring a title to a plot of land to an European, and for that matter, Portuguese. Materials that were used in putting up the structure, most of them were imported with the exception, of course, of water, sand, and stones. Even some stones, I'm told, were brought in, not necessarily to build a castle, but to serve as ballast. In other words, give extra weight to the boats when coming. And just at the entrance here, we have one of such stones. This is one of such stones the Portuguese brought in. On the tour of the castle, there are two types of bricks you can easily identify. We have the reddish ones and the yellowish ones. The reddish are said to be Portuguese. Yellowish are said to be Dutch. So then wherever you see red bricks, you are seeing the Portuguese construction. Where you see yellow, you are seeing the Dutch construction. Certain places, there will be the yellow and the red at the same place. And that will be recent development. To the Portuguese, they had two reasons basically why they built this. One, to trade. And then two, give out rooms for the missionaries who were to come in to spread Christianity. And when they came initially, they were Catholics. Before the 16th centuries, all these rooms on the ground floor were being used as storerooms or warehouses as planned. But then from the 16th centuries, they shifted from gold and others to human trade. And when that got started, the same storerooms we had were then converted to holding places where the Africans were kept. At the peak of it, the castle was talking of a minimum of about a thousand at a time. 600 men, 400 women. And this section of the castle became the female section. <laughs> Uh, Kale, yeah, put on the light for me now. Uh, so uh, how will we see the proper inside? Uh, how will we see? Oh, we see the that, if you if you were there in those days, whether you see or not, <laughs> and we'll be pushing your hair in shackles too. But oh, this place, this place is for uh -huh. male. Uh -huh. 
Um, anytime it rained, depending upon the direction of the wind, rainwater could pass through here to come and sweep these things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, while they are here. Then the rain will fall on them. No, the water uh -huh. will seep in. Now. Yeah. And then we'll wet the floor. But if hot, we, they were using rain, what about the dry season? Uh -huh. So the stench. And all this, I mean that you'll be giving food also here to eat. So, assuming you are here, will you eat the food or not? <laughs> huh? You have to eat to survive. Because if you didn't eat and you died, your burial ground was, was the sea. That's why they would throw you into. Ooh, even when you came, maybe you came from Burkina Faso, how are they going to trace? No, the person who bought you even doesn't know your relatives. In each of the, what, the chambers, there's an opening like this. The top there, where the guards, they will come and stay there and then be watching to see if there's any trouble or maybe the slaves are organizing themselves for a revolt or something. Then they will quickly go to report. But, but remember that as the slaves came from different countries, from different tribes, even communication amongst them was a problem. And they were always in shackles. It could be that maybe two people to one, either the leg, the arm, or maybe the neck. If you go to the museum, you see how the shackles were designed. So it means that if I wanted to sleep, then my brother would necessarily have to sleep. Otherwise, I would not feel comfortable, and I would he feel comfortable. It was also possible that what, if I wanted to lie down, if I don't lie in my own sheet, I will lie in somebody else's own. Oh, yeah. Sheet. sheet. Proper sheet. Sheet. Mm. Escrita. Yes, yes, yes. This is how they arrange them. Sort of line. Uh -huh. So one, where we went first? Then, then what? Then from the entrance. So one, two, three, four. This is the fifth one. Yeah. Mm. So 200, 200, making 1,000 at a time. When you are outside, you never know that this place is so deep until you come in. So if you are here at this time, or uh, at that time, where will you pass? Assuming you wanted to bolt, where were you going to climb out? Yeah, so yeah, when the time came for them to leave, between this hole and that one there was an opening, an underground tunnel, or a passage, where they went under. There was a door, so they opened the door and then they, they, they would go. Oh, they could still just bend and then go. So they would go and then come out at another point where they join smaller boats before they were taken into the bigger ships. So before the castle was built, uh, this place used to be a sacred place and still remains a sacred place because this was a fetish for the local people, uh, Cape Coast people. And oh, um, for them, they have about 77 of such gods. And this one is known as Nanatabri. It was here before the merchants came. And when they wanted to build a castle, what? They appealed to the people to move the god out for the castle to be built. I think the god also agreed to go on transfer. So they move it out and then for the castle to be built. So having abolished slave trade, you know, they decided to bring it back to its original place. That's why it is here. So now, the God is here. They have brought the God back. Why is it that our God didn't fight for us? I wish, I wish we could ask the God why the God is not fight for us. Yes. Because, uh, the, the, because if God's a spirit, then they should see ahead of the hand. Those of us who believe in the almighty God, huh? we said God is what? Listen or gives time for one to any sinner or to repent. Mm? And I believe that when they give the land out, also they give them some compensation. So if they are coming back here now, 
they should they, no that's my own thought process if they were God and they, they gave this place to these people they knew that at some point in time they were going to be betrayed so why are they back here for us to be praying to them I ask the question what, my, what I think is that these girls were not enlightened at that time they didn't know why do you, you call them God? We are now enlightened. We are now enlightened that we are questioning them, but they can't answer us. Unfortunately, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. By us, they are not gods in the first place. <laughs> Remember that all the period that the slaves spent here, no bath. So they will pick you out, and when you yielded to their demand, they gave you a thorough bath before you were taken up there, sexually abused, and then brought back to where they thought you belonged. But some ladies were prepared to die than to give themselves out. Maybe out of morality or what? Integrity. So if they found you to be such a person, they will push you inside here. There used to be a door here. They will lock you up. And they give you food through this uh, small window. And you stay there for about seven days. The idea that hot, hot. You will change your mind. Use you. And out of this relationship, some of the slaves became pregnant. There are adults, uh, hot ladies among you. If you miss your period for one day, you know. So some of them became pregnant, gave birth to children who were neither black, hot, nor white. And they used them for the school that they set up here. And when they were leaving, they couldn't take them away because where were they going to put them? More so, they were asked to come and do business, not multiply, you know, uh, or increased population. So governors, soldiers, traders kept on abusing the women sexually in the dungeons. Whenever the governor wanted, because of his position, he stood up on the balcony. He ordered the women out and made his choice. The one chosen could have been in the dungeons for a whole month, never cleaned her feet, never took her bath or bath, gone through menses sometimes, and still the governor wanted. So the soldiers had the responsibility of making sure the woman was washed. How did they do it? They fetched what from the tank or the cistern. They washed the woman at the center of the courtyard. Women from the dungeons looked on. After the humiliation, she was dressed up, given something to eat at least to be strong. Then up on the flight of stairs over here, we call it the private access to the governor's bedroom. The woman was taken to the governor. Okay, let's see the private access. So up on these stairs, through a door on top we call a trap door, the woman was taken to the governor. After the governor had used her, she was brought back to the dungeons. Instances they would even tell you that before she got back, she could have been used by some other guys also. Some very few became mistresses and they stayed longer. And those who became pregnant were subsequently freed or liberated. You need to understand, they came not only from today's what is known to be Ghana alone, but also from today's Togo, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, even Nigeria. So when the woman was finally free, she could not go back to where she came from. Secondly, the Europeans never wanted their babies to go anyhow. So some houses were then built here in town where those found pregnant were kept. When they delivered, their kids were brought back to the castle and they were educated. But then sadly... Most of these ones were educated to be used as a bridge between the Africans and the Europeans. And also they gave out names to their kids. And that was the genesis of the European names along the coast. So now in Almena we are still having people calling themselves Da Costa, Da Silva, Divier, Vaness, Vroom, Smith, Hutchison, Peterson, Youngson, Folson, Jefferson, Johnson, and all the Simpsons you can think about. You see... Issues connecting with slavery and trade is an area everybody gets edgy about. So family lines wouldn't want to connect themselves so much. But in Elmina, there ought to be a place called Mount Pleasant. That would be a place where all these ones were kept. And we have individual houses built by individual merchants where they stay with their so-called wives. Okay, so there will be a distinction. Those who were used in the castle and put, and those who were actually married. And stay with their husbands. So when the Dutch came in, they were thinking the Portuguese could poison them. So they stopped using this and had a bigger one built in the main courtyard. But then sadly, when the same Dutch guy who was thinking this could be poisoned, picked the woman to be used, the water to him poisoned, then became good enough to clean the woman. Now we're not using this also, but it's been proven water in there was not poisoned. 
They were just scared. Okay. They were just scared. Scared. And a woman difficult is that woman who had refused or resisted from a soldier. Doing just that, she was pulled out, chained to the ankles of the legs, made to stand in the sun or the rain as long as they wanted no food as punishment. Yeah. And the idea was to put fear into them or break their spirit, so that any time any soldier would come, easily have one to be used. So we know soldiers, traders, governors, all using the women, partly explains why we had their light color skins along the coast in those days. Opposite that way, okay. and here they kept between 200 and 300 slaves. Slave. Yeah, you know, the female slaves, female slaves are not as many as what the men. Okay. Um, but the treatment given them was not different from that of the men. These openings serve as what as sources of light as well as sources of what ventilation. No, so they did everything here, even when they had the amenities, it was yes. here. Rainwater could pass through. You can still see marks of hot rainwater even up to this day. When it rains, it depends upon the hot direction of the wind. Rainwater could enter here. So come and mix up all this mess. You know, and then it's better hot. This was a small gutter to run through here into the sea. On top of this, you could be taken out, sexually abused, and then brought back here. It's over 300 years old. Yes, very heavy. Made of uh, hot. Iron and then wood. Yeah. Um, this is a cell. As if the dungeons were not sufficient enough, they created this cell. No, call it a condemned cell. It will not be fired from right. Because once you were put in there, no water, no food, no ventilation hole, nothing like light. So you are sure you will die. It has, it has about what? About three doors. This is the first one, another one. A second uh, or a third one before you enter. The frontage here was meant for European guards who offended and they were kept here for a few hours. They have some ventilation and then they're taken out. But inside was for the slaves. Hmm. So they yeah. Why would they you put to warrant that treatment? No, the slaves didn't come here voluntarily. So some attempted bolting, running oh. away. Some were fighting and a whole lot of other things. So when they found you to be that recalcitrant, mm. then they come and put you inside there. You know, there has not been any records of any of them being able to run away or bolt. Um, it's only uh, one that hot, they said SPI hot, happened in Cuba. You know, when slaves were being transported from one island to another, they were able to kill the captain as well as the cook of the ship, diverted what? The, the direction of the ship. Eventually, no, they were freed. So if you Google Amistad, yeah, you come across these details. Amistad, A M I S T A D. Let let us go in. We we'll, we are all going in. Huh? We are going in to see how the conditions are. Please, when you go, don't come out. There's a big room there for all of us. We are all going in. Hello. Yes. Yeah. So wow. this is what it used to be. Um, there, there was a door here. So this faint light that is coming in, you not even see. The extreme end was another door. Um, so that's where, from time to time, they come and open and see whether you were still alive or dead. And if dead, they will open, they will open this one for another slave to come and pull you out. And we were thrown into the sea. No, just for the short while that we have spent here, we have started sweating already. Yeah. So let alone spending 24 hours here. No water, no food. We don't know how many people went through this ordeal, but once it was made for human beings, then we know that people died here. So uh, I'll beg that, please, just one minute silence for those who died here. Just one minute silence, please. <laughs> this thing. You are returning. <laughs> All the rooms on the ground floor were dungeons for men. 
On top all round were residences for soldiers, traders and pastors, deputy governor following and then the governor. So the important the person was perceived to have been the higher appellate. When the ships had come, the men were taken from these dungeons to this. So this became known as transit dungeon. In the transit, some of them were branded. You know branding, they put the stamps in fire, they give them marks. And because we're weak, some were dying from the shock or the pain of it. The hole here and the next one up here were for light and air, for ventilation. And as we go on, you have to watch your head and take a step down. Watch your head, one step down. When, when, the, ships, when the ships had come, the, the women who had survived all these were put in chains, led down this way to the room there, and from there to the last point, we call it the room of no return. So that's where they were given to the boats and they were taken away. These bars were put there not long ago just to avoid accidents. And before there were stairs where they descended. But then now because we are not using the water tank, we've made a drainage over here so that when it rains, water would collect in and then go away. Okay, let's see the room of no return. So